on, off, on, shit, off, fuck yeah, off. Isn't that awesome? Well, sort of awesome. It's voice activated. Kind of like the clapper. I guess it would work with clapping too. Let me, I haven't tried that yet. Also, my dog's in here. You hear scampering around. Yeah, that works too. So it's, yeah, it's a sound activated Ultraman lamp, <laughs> which it just flashes while you've got it plugged in, I guess. Um, there is a thing over here. Let me see. Does that just mean it stays on? If I flick the switch off? Okay. So if I flick the switch, it just stays on. But if I flick the switch this way, now it's sound activated. Okay, let's just leave it on, I guess, so it's not fli uh, flickering and whatnot. So anyway, yeah, cheers from Japan. I'm the Tokyo Toy Bastard, and welcome to another Mega Haul video. This time, everything is auction or online-based purchases uh, from recent Japanese online auctions, mostly. Uh, the reason being, I couldn't go hunting this past week or this weekend. Uh, I did go last weekend. And then right after that, the cases of COVID sh shot up to record numbers here in Tokyo. So uh, I am staying home this weekend. I was also sick with a sinus infection uh, the last few days. So if I sound a little funny, I end up hacking up something through this video. I apologize. But I I'm feeling pretty good today and I sound okay, I think, compared to yesterday. Well, anyway, um, so I picked up this in an auction. Uh, came with the box. Uh, this was produced by Beatland. If you can see the Beatland logo there, uh, who also made a Godzilla lamp based off the old Poppy uh, mold. Uh, recently, I actually acquired one of those and sold it. I uh, didn't really get to review it, but um, also you'll notice here there's a P. That stands for Plex. That does not stand for Poppy. Poppy's logo is written as Poppy in Katakana. So if you ever see that P, it means Plex. So this was made in collaboration with Plex. Plex does a lot of uh, figure production and stuff for Bandai and associated companies. Um, but yeah, this was released in 1989. There's the top of the box. All the sides. And it tells you, yeah, that it's uh, sound activated. It's got a picture of a little boy shouting at it. And um, it's pretty awesome. So I found this uh, randomly. I, I, if you saw my last video, I, I picked up uh, several Crayon Shin-Chan lamps and... Um, I found this while I was looking at those, and uh, uh, you can see here the original price tag that this was selling for, uh, most likely secondhand at like a flea market or something, uh, was 4,500 yen. After inflation, after, you know, 30 year inflation and uh, uh, exchange rate, that's probably about 50 bucks. Um, but yeah, he came with the box and I was really stoked and he still worked. And um, the box is a little beat up, but like the the lamp itself is in really good condition. Uh, let me actually just unplug it real quick so we can just take a look at it without the light on. I'm gonna do it without a cut. You can hear me struggle with my la la with my plug. There we go. And it's really out of focus now. Man, I guess that's because the light cut off. There we go. All right. So yeah, there it is. It's really nice. It's it's like a giant SD chibi uh, kind of animated version of Ultraman. I really dig it. I really like the Ultraman. And we're going to talk more about like animated and uh, illustrated versions of Ultraman in just a bit. But I thought I'd show that first since I showed the Shin-Chan lamp first. Also, if you really, really like this, guess what? Just like the Shin-Chan lamp, I ended up getting more than one. So this one will be for sale. It doesn't have the box though. But yeah, if you're interested in one of these guys, I got you covered. Um, next here we have a uh, slightly smaller version replica reissue of sorts of the original vintage uh, Shogokin Mazinger Z, or Mazinger Z as it's known here. So in 2003, Bandai basically scaled down and reissued their die-cast Shogokin line. Uh, I don't know how many they did in the line. I believe on the back of this box here, it doesn't have any information. Never mind. Um, they might, I think they may have done the first three or something. But the Mazinger is obviously the best one. And it's got all the original features that the original one had. Uh, so you've got your 
die cast parts. So this is all die cast, very heavy, even though it's a uh, four inch scale figure, which is great because it's basically like Microman scale. But it has the uh, the rocket firing fists, which I will demonstrate. I will shoot the box here. Let's see. Yeah, I want to get it nice shot there. Oh, missed the box. Bad aim, Jeremy. There we go. And he's also got his rocket firing titty missiles. Can't leave home without those. Plus uh, these these wing things. These have an actual name. I forgot what they're called. And if you have to take that off to fire his titties. Titties! Titties. But yeah, this is really awesome. I found this at uh, my local book off, actually. So this is the only item that I picked uh, picked up um, not from online. And this was last weekend after I had, I had already made my uh, my hunting videos. So go in there, titty. But yeah, this was too awesome to not pick up. Uh, I am not really a Chogokin collector, and I do collect some Devilman stuff, and I do like uh, Nagai Go's manga and character designs and things. So, you know, and this being like a Microman scale and released around that same time, and I am collecting pulpy stuff, and I do collect uh, similar kind of robotish things like this, so I was like, ah, I'll grab it. Especially after finding out that these sell for like 75 bucks and up, and I got it for about 25, 2,500 yen, so win! The next item we have in my little haul pile thing here is a uh, vintage laser work bot. Now, I was not very familiar with this line of work bot uh, wind-up toys. Um, they were a thing in Europe, mostly from what I can tell, made by a company called New Ray, I believe. And um, I've actually got the packaging here that it came in, which, uh, yeah, these were called Star Trooper Laser Work Bots. And it came in these awesome, cool, uh, kind of clamshell, uh, see-through window panel blisters. And um, here's the full lineup here. And I got this guy. And I discovered these um, through one of Slimehouse's videos. So if you're not familiar with Slimehouse, uh, they produce a lot of toy-related content uh, based in the UK, I believe. And uh, he talked about these... Uh, in a video about another figure line, which I'm not going to go into. And so I looked some of these up and I ended up finding this on eBay, I believe from a seller in France or Italy. And it's been a while and I just, ne I realized I'd never put it into a, one of the videos. So they're really cool. So basically they're just, they're just uh, robots that have like uh, different uh, accessories for working. So this one's got a shovel and some kind of like welding tool. This doesn't pop open or anything. But the original ones were not made in this kind of chrome color and these chrome ones were way too awesome. So I picked up a chrome one, mint and package. Unfortunately, and these were made in the early 90s. Unfortunately, a lot of really cheap wind-up toys, especially ones made in China. Um, I think they're all wind-up toys made in China, but you know, you got your hit or miss on the, the, the quality. All the wind-up toys I've ever that were made in Japan that I've bought usually still work, but Chinese ones, not so much. Let's see how well this one works. Yeah, he still, he still works, basically. He's gonna, he's gonna do, do a U-turn. Work. Don't slack off. You're supposed to work, you work bot. Do your work. Dig something. Make me something. He's not trying very hard. Cool, cool little toy. Up uh, next, I have an assortment of vintage joint robo uh, little omake toys by Lotte. And these were prizes that came with bubble gum. Or fusen gum, as it said, he says here. Fusen means means balloon. Balloon gum, I guess it's called here. I didn't know that until I ordered these, that bubble gum was called Fusen gum here. Uh, but yeah, these are basically like little Microman knockoffs, essentially. Um, and I dig them a lot. And they're all, all three of these are different. Let me uh, open a couple of these up. Um, these are the kind of things that you can easily, you know, reinsert the staples and the header cards and stuff. But uh, I definitely want to keep one of these displayed mint in bag. Let's take a look, look at one of them. Open up. Ever so delicately. Mm. Mm. There we go. All right. Man, yeah, this is definitely very cheap plastic. Uh, does it say where these were made? No, it doesn't. I'm assuming these were made in China. I'm, I'm assuming most of these uh, Japanese prize toys were made in China. But I could be wrong. And these joint robos, I believe, are from the early 80s. 
Um, and there's a whole assortment of joint robo, different different types of joint robo figures. These are the only ones that I've seen that definitely look more like kind of a Diaclone, Micronauts, Microman type of thing. And they come with uh, like these guys. These guys have um, they all have different uh, uh, arm and legs and bodies are different. The insides are different. Uh, but they're translucent, and they also come with different accessories. Like, these two come with guns, and I opened this one because it came with a sword, and I thought that was way more awesome. So, yeah, limited articulation, but, you know, that's what you get with these cheap figures. And it's really cool because the uh, the little clear chest inside is very reminiscent of, like, Hench and Cyborg. And I believe one of them is this one right here. Yeah, this one even has, like, a magnifying glass that magnifies the inside, which is really cool. I may end up just opening all these and displaying them loose, but... Uh, I may end up selling one. I don't know. I do see these pop up occasionally, but these are really cool. These are really cool. I love these. So cool. While we're on the topic of omake or bonus prize toys that came with candy and whatnot, uh, these are some more uh, of those. Uh, a couple of these are Glico related. The other two, I'm not sure. I think they're unmarked. This one is a Glico uh, omake toy from the 70s or 80s looks maybe more like 80s um, but it's a little uh record player and it's so awesome let's see is this getting focused correctly this is so tiny this is actually smaller than i thought it was going to be but it's got like the little needle that moves up and down you can lay it on the record wherever you like and then you can spin the record and the needle will turn i don't know if you can see it movement it's ever so slightly there we go you can see it yeah, this is really cool. And I think it's got the marking on there somewhere. Yeah, it's, I don't know. I don't think I can zoom in on the the markings on this tiny thing. I'm not going to waste the time doing it. But yeah, it says Guriko, and then it says something else really small that I can't read. So, I'll put that over there. Up next, we've got this wicked little handgun um, in these awesome colors. And... Uh, I saw this and I I thought it was smaller originally and it came with some other guns but this was the best one so I figured I'd show this one and I didn't realize that it was actually functioning it's so tiny but I mean it's it's bigger than I thought but I thought it was like you could put like into like a small action figure's hand or something but it, I noticed that it's actually got like the hammer pulls back and it's got a trigger and check it out you can cock it and it's basically just like a little tiny rubber band system inside and um yeah, if you fix the rubber band inside, which I have not yet, uh, if you pull the trigger, it would close. But I need to fix this, so uh, I need I need some time to fix that. Hopefully, I can fix it. That's really cool, and I, I like it just for the colors. So, uh, next we got this little car here. Actually, a big car. I, I thought it was going to be like one of the little smaller Matchbook mini SD cars or something, but it's actually quite large. Uh, and I've been grabbing a bunch of these. I've got a bunch coming in in a different auction lot. Uh, but this is also uh, Guriko uh, Amake toy, and this is one that winds up, so it doesn't work very well at the moment. These are very old, um, 30 plus years old, almost 40 years old, I'm assuming this one is. And if you turn this around and then put it down, this is supposed to shoot off. Uh, it's also got a rubber band mechanism inside. This is something I might, I might also try to repair, um, especially since I'm getting a lot of these mechanical Omake toys. I might as well just go ahead and try to fix some of them up. And finally, the last one in here. This was very interesting. This is the bulkiest one that I have picked up. Uh, this is similar. This is actually bigger than the, the robot that I picked up picked up last week. Um, and it, it, it resembles a duck, which is really cool. I didn't notice it until later. But basically the head, which is a gun, which actually has a spring and stuff inside, but it doesn't have the part that goes inside the chute, resembles a duck's head. And the body resembles a duck's body. And you've even got the wings to pull down. So it's kind of like a cyborg duck ship. And um, it's even the right scale to where I believe I could stick like a micro hood man on here. So let me, let me go grab a micro hood man real quick. All right, yeah, he's about the right size. Let's see, stick him on there. Yeah, he, he sort of fits. That kind of works. So now I've got a vehicle for my micro hood man, especially since the hood man vehicles suck balls. Yeah, this is way cooler. Got a fucking giant robot duck. And the markings on the bottom. What do we got here? So yeah, this is not Glico. And it's got a bunch of... It's got like instructions or like the last half of some instructions. It looks like there was more printed here that got cut off. This is really cool. I want to find more about this. And I want to see if I can find this missile that's missing. It also looks like there was something here 
but it's broken off. So anyway, nice little assortment of little uh, of little omake toys. Could you guess which one would be, was the most expensive? What, which one do you think was the most expensive out of all these? You know, you would expect these, like I said, I think I've mentioned this one before, but some of these things could go for crazy prices. Um, surprisingly, this little tiny beast right here was the most expensive out of all of these. Uh, this set me back after shipping and whatnot, close to $40, but I was like, that's way too cool. And I, I'm assuming that this actually probably sells for more if uh, this were to be found at a shop that specialized in this kind of thing. So, yeah, it's a... Uh, this is going to be a pricey uh, venture into collecting these. Oh well, I hope you enjoyed these. I've got more coming in soon. Alright, it's time for some more Shin-Chan stuff. Uh, in my last few videos, I've started to build up my Shin-Chan Shin collection and as well as pick up some Shin-Chan stuff for some people that had requested it. And the first item I have here is a vintage 1993 uh, Shin-Chan as the Action Bastard or... Uh, uh, action Kamen uh, and it's a Yubi Ningyo finger puppet and I have the standard version of him without this costume and now I've got the costume version and if you saw my last video I picked up a rarer larger sized uh, soft vinyl of him in this garb and we're gonna I've got something special come up, coming up related to this in just a moment so stick stick around and then I've also got a modern Omake prize toy from S I don't know if this is Sukiya I'm not sure which uh, company gave this away as a, as a premium uh, bonus toy, but it's a wind-up uh, strap, and he, he dances, he waddles. But yeah, I thought it was too cool. And uh, also, well, he just wiggles around the background there, I also picked up this little uh, pinball game. I like this kind of stuff, and it's... Even though this is modern, it, it definitely has got that early 90s feel to it. Um, yeah, this was also, I believe, a Sukiya premium thing. But, you know, got your standard pinball action. Gotta make it through all the holes there. And my son loves playing with these. He's been playing with this nonstop since I got it in. And I got a few different little things like this, Shin Chan based. So, nice little thing to add to my Shin Chan collection. Up next, I've got a box of chocolate. Some chocolate chocobi. Wait a second. I'm lying. So Chocobi is actually a real brand of uh, chocolate snacks, like little chocolate stars that are popular with little kids. And in the TV show Crayon Shin-Chan, uh, I guess they cross promotion, you know, he, he also eats them in the show. And he sometimes gets uh, prizes inside of his, just like, you know, omake prizes. But um, in this particular box here, we have Action Kamen. So there's actually no chocolate inside. And it's a Sophobi. Check it out. This was produced by Bandai in uh, 2019, just last year. They also produced a, uh, a Godzilla with uh, Godzilla and his butt sticking out, which I still don't have yet. Um, but yeah, this guy is awesome, and he's pretty pricey. This guy sells for a... a up to $100, around $100. I got it for a bit cheaper, and I think that's because this was previously opened, and there was a little nick on the top of his head, which I'm not too concerned about, but I mean, still. Uh, yeah, this was pricey. There was a vintage version of this, or semi-vintage, produced by Marmot, the company that's famous for making uh, really awesome Godzilla uh, vinyl toys. And uh, at the time, it was just like a cheap item they, they put out in the 90s. But uh, it's almost exactly the same as this, except it's got more of a metallic sheen on the chest, and the eye sculpt looks a bit different. They're a little more bug-eyed looking. And all of the paint on this is pretty sloppy. The paint on the Marmot ones is even sloppier. Um, on the belt buckle area. But, uh, you know, I had to have one, and it's like 150 usually for the, the vintage one. And, uh, yeah, I wanted to keep it close to a lower price. I'm sure eventually I'll go for the vintage one and end up selling this one off, but I had to pick this one up and add them to my Crayon Shin Chan um, Action Common collection because it's growing and I needed an actual Action Common to stick in there. So at some point I'll probably do a review of all my Action Common and Shin Chan related stuff, but until then, enjoy this one. Up next we've got a vintage Sofa Uh This is from the early 80s and this is actually uh, made by Poppy. Not Poopy, Poppy, Poppy. Um, and it's Arale, Dr. Slump, 
And this is a Sofa B I've, I have picked up in the past, but this is uh, much better condition. And this was sitting on Yahoo Auctions for a long time for a really low price. And I've seen this at like Mandarake for, for quite a bundle of money. Um, anything Arale and Popi usually sells for quite a lot, well over 50 bucks at least, closer to 100. And I found this under that. So you can see here it's got the uh, Made in Japan Popi logo there. Uh, TNA stands for tits and ass, and uh, you know, it's just a cute little Arale um, waving, saying ho yo yo or whatever. And she's articulated in the middle. And uh, I actually have a Dr. Simbe that goes with this. I will talk about my Dr. Slump collection updated in a future video. Um, I made a collect a really rough video, uncut with a really bad camera a couple of years ago of my Dr. Slump collection. But uh, I have since refined my collection and got a better camera. So I will make a updated uh, Dr. Slump collection at some point in the very near future. And real quick before I cut the camera, I have one more similar scaled uh, Safa bee I wanna add that I wanna show you with this Arale. And his head doesn't fit on camera. So I guess I am gonna have to cut the camera. This gentleman here is a 1970s Bullmark original vintage small size, small scale uh, Safa bee. Uh, Bullmark made these kind of, um, was he five or six inches uh, scale figures? And then they made the seven inch, which was like the medium scale, and then they made the large scale ones. So, yeah, I, these are really cool because they're, they're basically like what you think of like when you think of action figure scale, and it's Sophobie, and it's vintage, and it's Ultraman, so it's really cool. Although, I believe I overpaid for this. I won this. Uh, uh, for around a hundred dollars after shipping and then I f on my last hunt at Mandarake This is after I'd already paid for this waiting for it to come in I found one at Mandarake for about six thousand yen before tax so eh, It paid over a little bit, but you know He was hand delivered to my house and that left me with more cash to spend uh, for other stuff last week So, you know, I'm not I'm not bent about it and these are really cool. I mean I don't know he's really cool. He's like got that kind of elongated face He almost looks like the Nisei Ultraman uh, but you can tell he's not. He doesn't have like the black paint here. He doesn't have the pointy toes, and uh, his his he doesn't have uh, his eyes are similar, but they're not quite the same. So hey, this is Ultraman, not Nisei Ultraman, which means fake Ultraman. And it's got the Bullmark logo stamp right there, and yeah, he's awesome. I mean, he's he's got a little nicks. He's got a few nicks here and there, but I mean, he was played with by a little kid, and he's still overall in great condition for something from the the mid seventies. So I'm happy with it, happy with both these guys. And I've got some more Ultraman Safa B coming up in just a second. Some vintage and some really cool designer stuff. Stick around. Check out this glorious fella right here. This massive, glorious Ultraman. And this is a very special Ultraman. It's not vintage, but it is based on the original vintage Ultraman manga, which was by Kazuo Umezu who was famous for uh, later producing some like really weird, bizarre, vi ultra-violent uh, manga involving children. And man, it's a, it's some pretty crazy stuff. I'll, I'll have to do a video about his stuff event at, at some point. But um, initially, I picked up this manga uh, in an auction. And I was like, wow, that's really cool because he's got, I like the Ultraman that's got the white instead of the gray. I just think he looks cool and the red pops more. And uh, the manga is amazing. And uh, you know, it's got his trademark art style. And um, yeah, uh, maybe I'll review the manga at some point in in depth. But uh, I, I won this manga, and then while I was searching for more of the volumes, I came across this guy, but in a different version. So this was actually produced by um, Artstorm, the company that uh, runs the Super Festival, uh, the Superfest Toy Festival in, in Japan. And uh, this is a Superfest exclusive, I believe, although I do believe they also sell variants of this on their website. So there might still be one uh, with a... I think it's like a darker color and it's got a it's got a pinkish red uh, color timer instead but I really wanted one with the blue color timer and I wanted this version and there's and also a, I think it's glow in the dark or looks glow in the dark it's kind of a pearl white which I had not been able to find but uh, yeah I settled with this one I found this for a really good price and I won it in, the, in an auction um, I meant to bring the header card out here I've got it packed away somewhere but I didn't realize until after I won the auction is that it came with two jumbo size special edition versions of the complete manga. So I mean, these are huge. And like, like this it's in itself was like almost half of what I would have paid for uh, in the, like the auction price. Like I would have paid 
uh, close to that half of that amount for these. So the fact that all of these came together was amazing. But now I don't really need this smaller version, this smaller volume. So if anyone wants to buy this smaller volume and uh, the lamp I mentioned before, they can go a nice little, nice little pair there. So, you know, let me know if you're interested. So real quick, I wanted to show you the bottom of his feet. So it says Art Storm and then also Future, which also I believe is the actual company that I think sculpted this. And uh, I'm not very familiar with Future as far as software goes, but yeah. Anyway. Here is my lovely glow-in-the-dark Ultraman by Marusan, based on one of their original sculpts from the late 60s, mid to late 60s. And uh, this was released... Um, this year, uh, and it was originally a pre-order, I believe dating back to late last year, through Marusan's website, and uh, I acquired a few because people had requested some. Never did a video on it, so I don't think I did. I might have shown it in the package, but I, I opened mine up, and here it is. Here's mine. And then recently on Yahoo Auctions, I found that M1 had released this cool little keychain, a uh, glow-in-the-dark Ultraman. Let me see how, uh, if I can get this focused correctly. Can you focus? Hi. And uh, this was very inexpensive, and he's, he's a translucent, glow-in-the-dark uh, vinyl. And he's really awesome. And he's doing the punch like he does at the beginning of the show. And it's on this little keychain. And of course, I'm not going to attach this to my backpack and ruin it. I'm going to hang it from the wall or something. But anyway, as you can see, I was on a glow-in-the-dark Ultraman kick. And um, then I found out that Marusan had put out secretly, I guess, uh, an exclusive uh, jumbo-sized version of this. I mean, this is already a, what, seven inch scale. Um, jumbo size, their 450 line version, uh, through a website that I, I really didn't know about. And I found it by accident uh, because I was going through Yahoo Auctions and I clicked Yahoo Shopping on accident and I was given a recommendation, which I thought was this through a Yahoo Auctions, uh, sorry, a Yahoo Shopping link based on my Yahoo Auctions uh, searching preferences. And I, I, I was like, okay, I've already ordered that. And then I saw that the price was like um, pretty cheap. So, and these have already been sold, has already sold out. So I was like, oh, okay, uh, let me click on this real quick. Cause I know got other people have been requesting these. And then I noticed that it was the 450 line, not the 350, which means it was jumbo scale. So I was like, hell yeah, for this, almost the same price. Um, I'm like, bought. Next morning, sold out. I think I may have bought the very last one. And here it is. Check him out in his Jumbo glory. So yeah, I'm a sucker for Jumbo figures. Um, and I was super happy to find this Jumbo glow in the dark one. And I will have to review my entire Ultraman Sofa B collection at some point. Because it's it's getting really big. But anyway, it's really awesome. It just came in uh, earlier this past week after my last video. So I thought I'd show them to you guys. This was in an auction lot. What's up next? More glow-in-the-dark Safabi, but it's not Ultraman. I'll give you a hint. Screeonk! So I've had this little Hyper Hobby miniature uh, version of the uh, giant Godzilla for a long time, probably a decade or more. Um, and it is basically a miniaturized version released by Iwakura, and Bandai of the original Bullmark Giant Godzilla, but in glow-in-the-dark format, uh, and in the miniature Iwakura Gashapon line. This was a Hyper Hobby ma 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 magazine exclusive, and um, brain aneurysm. And I've always wanted the giant, the actual giant size version of this. They did reissue uh, this figure in very various colors, in the small size, and as the original giant size. I could never quite find or afford when I did find the giant version. But recently, and actually not in this past auction, and for some reason I never showed this in my pickups video as far as I remember, um, I was able to find a giant one and afford it. Yeah, way. There it is. Look how amazing it is. Even the little one is basking in its glory. Got your glow-in-the-dark Tokyo Tower, which is a separate piece. And I've got my little miniature version right here. And uh, yeah, just look at just look at how awesome that is. He's so cool. If you've ever seen Godzilla vs. Hedera, uh, the standard vintage version of this is the one one of the two figures that the little boy towards the beginning is sliding down his slide and uh, destroying in the mud. But man, nothing 
nothing outdoes a giant glow-in-the-dark version. So I was very happy to pick this up, and it's been sitting in the header card and bag just in the corner of my house or in my collecting room for a couple months now. And I wanted to, I think I wanted to make a video review of it on itself, but um, you know, I think just for today, I I, did, I wanted to add some more Godzilla in here because I've got some amazing Godzilla stuff coming up in just a moment. But this was something I I've neglected to put in my video, so I just wanted to show it to you guys real quick because it's quite amazing, and I finally got it kind of opened and put into my display. So I figure I show it to you now. You know, later better than never. So my last few pickup videos, I've been picking up a lot of uh, Ultraman stuff, and especially a lot of Ultraman Teshi, and that's no different this time. I've also picked up, yet again, another little lot of Ultraman Keshi, which I'm not going to dump out and go through. These are all fairly similar uh, sculpts and, and, and stuff here. Um, but one thing I did want to know was what year each line was released, and what what separates each line, what's the difference is, how many different lines were there, and as in my last video I found some really interesting ones I didn't know too much about, and I really wanted to know more. Thankfully, at my local department store last Sunday, I found that they had a copy of this amazing book, Ultraman Keshigomu Encyclopedia, essentially, or Ultra Kaiju uh, Keshigomu Encyclopedia. The giant Ultraman Kaiju and stuff encyclopedia. And it's got everything. I mean, as far as I know, this has every version and series and line of Ultra Kaiju, including... Sorry, not Ultra Kaiju. Ultraman Keshi, including this line. And this is the line I've been looking for specifically because I really want this pink and purple Ultraman. That, that is a, a Keshi Grail of mine. And I discovered that, like, uh, Ultraman, the Ultraman Keshi line, pretty much were the very first, uh, like, licensed character uh, eraser figures. Uh, from my knowledge, I mean, there might be, have been some earlier ones, but, like, kind of the earliest popular ones were these from the uh, 70s, mostly in the early 80s, I think, when they gained more popularity, around the same time as um, uh, Kaneko Man. But, like... They popularized and um, uh, around the same time as Can You Command, and also pioneered some of the things like the Articulated Keshi, which I found last week. Uh, I've got the full lineup here, so I know more about them. I found out that these were released in um, uh, 1988, uh, and also they they even did some like cross up ones, like the Dragon Ball cross up, which I will have a review of some Dragon Ball cross up stuff in the future. Uh, as far back as 1982, the year I was born, so. Uh, so that was pretty amazing. So I learned a lot from this book. This book was not cheap, though. I did pay uh, a little over 30 bucks for it. So, And it was a last copy. So if you're, if you're interested in this book, let me know. I could probably still order some. But, man, I was super happy to find this. And now I've got a huge lot of... Even some over here, I think I still got... I've got a, just bags and bags of Ultraman Keshi to go through and sort and then price accordingly and label because I'm going to have a huge sale of Ultraman Keshi, Godzilla Keshi, Dragon Ball Keshi. Uh, maybe this weekend. I'm not sure. Not as much for sale in this video so far as you may have noticed, but this next little lot here, boom. Most of this is going to be going up for sale because uh, it's all Godzilla and I have a lot of it. And um, yeah, man, I just picked up this lot and I was like, I can't, I can't pass it up for the price. And I saw some Biolantes in here, some Rose Biolantes. So, you know, let's, uh, let's dump this out and see what's inside. So, first thing I notice is that there is quite a lot of paperwork in here. Original, uh, the original papers. Let's see, some of them are buried back here. Um, but yeah, there's there's quite a few of them, and uh, that's one thing you'll, you you won't find too often unless you buy uh, Keshi straight like in the capsule. So yeah, this is all vintage uh, Godzilla, Gashapon, Keshi, and SD uh, vinyl finger puppet figures. So I will organize these in just a moment. But let's take a look at this paperwork. Because I don't come across these that often. So you've got your lineup here all drawn and their little SD forms. And uh, yeah, that's pretty rad. These are originally 100 yen to 200 yen, it looks like. And uh, I'm excited to see what all's in here. So 
that's a lot. There's a lot of stuff in here. This beats this beats the last couple junk bags I bought. This is all super clean. All right, let me organize this and uh, come back to you in a second. Okay, so there's a lot of Keshi to go through, but I went ahead and picked out the non keshi stuff, which is all pretty much vinyl stuff uh, and some little PV things, PVC things. And uh, real quick, get these guys out of the way. There are also two uh, little keychains uh, from 1999 of uh, Mirei Goji or Millennium Godzilla uh, playing soccer, which uh, I'll probably give one to my son and I may keep one or throw one in as a bonus, but yeah. These are kind of cool, um, and they I know that they made these in different sports, like they did a baseball one and some other things. I have found these in the past, but a nice little bonus, not something I would have bought on its own. Um, and then these guys I've never seen before. So these are like little PVC uh, minifigures, and here we've got a little jet. We've got a little Godzilla and a little Mecha Godzilla from the uh, Heisei series. And I, I'm assuming these are all like a set. And these are really cool. I've never seen these. And this little lavender uh, Mecha King Ghidorah. Yeah, these are definitely keepers for me, unless someone um, lets me know what they are and I find more. <laughs> uh, these are really cool. And uh, something I didn't expect to be in this lot. So I'm really stoked about that. Then up next, we've got a bunch of um, finger puppets. Let's talk about the bigger ones first. So. First, we've got this really awesome Heisei Godzilla, which I don't think I have this sculpt. Um, this will probably go to my collection. I have a similar one in a different color, but this has got that that really awesome uh, deep black with silver spray. Really sick. We've got a couple classic Mecha Godzillas. So one of these will go up for sale. I'm not sure if I'll keep the other one or not. Um, I'm not really much of a finger puppet collector. I mean, I do collect some of this, some stuff, but like, I'm not trying to get all the kaiju or anything. Uh, I do collect the Godzillas that I like, though. Um, we've got Megalon, which my kids love Megalon because they love Jet Jaguar. I, it's a shame there was no big Jet Jaguar in here. There was a small one. I'll get to that in a second. And this little green Godzilla, which is uh, definitely from the uh, later Showa period. So that one's kind of cool. I like the colors on it. So yeah, those guys are awesome. And then here with these little miniature ones, uh, let me just show them uh, a couple at a time here. So we've got Batra, little miniature finger puppet, and Jet Jaguar, which is uh, done in a, I don't know if you can see it, there's a glitter, and uh, it's a glittery with uh, gold spray there. He's pretty cool. I found him in the past. I think I sold it, but I think I might hold, hang on to that one. Uh, we've got Titanosaurus, which is really rad, and King Shisa. And then we've got five different Godzillas. Uh, I'll just show them to you real quick. And we've got pretty much uh, a nice representation of uh, most of the Showa and Heisei uh, Godzillas in here. They're all slightly different. None of them are exactly the same sculpt. And then this one's pretty much just a smaller version of sorts of the, uh, the big one that I picked up. So yeah, really cool. Nice little lot here. I mean, the price that I paid for this lot probably would have covered this, like, on its own, like if I were to buy these at Mandarake or something in a bag. So I, I'm surprised no one else bid in this auction. All right, so now I'm gonna, now that I've gone through those, uh, I, I've stuck all the Keshi back in here. So now I'm gonna go through all the Keshi and uh, show you what I find that's interesting. All right, here's the first little batch of Keshi out of that giant, massive lot. Um, and these are all the ones that didn't really go together with the other series. Uh, so there's a there's a few different series and waves of Keshi lines in here. Uh, possibly complete. I haven't really checked. But these are all just kind of standouts that weren't part of the other ones. So I figured I'd just do them separately to start off with. And I also put all the paperwork that came uh, here with them. And there, there are various paperworks. Uh, these four are all the same one. And they got a couple other ones. I'm not going to go through all the paperwork. You know, you're going to see the figures for yourself. So, But it's really nice to have these uh, collected as well. And surprisingly, out of that entire giant bag that has, oh my gosh, I don't know. I'll have to count them eventually, but I mean, that's the biggest Godzilla Keshi lot I've ever gotten. Um, they were all so pristine and clean. Like, they were basically like factory dead stock and complete. I can't believe it, except for these two. These two Space Godzillas were missing their tails. That's it. So, 
and now they've just got big gaping buttholes. So everything else that I'm about to show you after this little lot uh, is complete, and it's amazing, which I will, you'll see why once I get to them. But first, let's talk about these guys real quick. So we've got some like just real standard ones. Um, these are all vintage uh, from the 80s and 90s. Um, I'm pretty sure these guys right here, these four are all from the same line. This Ghidorah I see often, um, I believe this is from 83 or 84. Uh, and you see this in sets occasionally, but I've never seen one this clean. Like this is super clean. And we've also got a Manila here that's super clean, but you know, fuck Manila. But if you like Manila, you know, yeah. Um, got an Anguirus, very clean. My favorite, Biolante, fleshy Biolante. And I already have this, so yeah, I'm, I, was, I basically bought this lot because there were some Biolantes I saw that I wanted, but there's a lot more now that I get looking closer. I mean, I couldn't see very well in the in the uh, image one, the auction image. But um, I really like this Mothra. I don't know, for some reason I've been picking up uh, Mothra larva in like these really chunky ones, and I'm really digging them. He comes in two pieces, so this might be one I hold on to. You got Rodan, and um, this one right here is a really awesome one. So you've got your 54 Gojila, and he's complete, and uh, I don't have this one. He's got a really long tail, though. Like, I don't think his tail is that long, but, I mean, it looks cool. Anyway, that will go in my collection, I'm pretty sure. And I know you guys are all looking at this awesome kind of golden Mecha King Ghidorah, which is really rad. Now, this is not something that uh, is... is it's cool, but it's not something I really collect in, in the in my Keshi style of preference of, of things that I like to collect Keshi. So this will be up for sale too. So pretty much everything here, except for maybe this Godzilla, will be up for sale. And some of this paperwork will be for sale with some of the other stuff I'm about to show you. So stick around. I've got uh, f one, two, three, four, four more giant lots of Godzilla Keshi with a lot more stuff than this. So stick around. If you're a big Keshi nerd or a Godzilla nerd, definitely stick around. So if you've made it this far, thank you. But if you're not a Godzilla Keshi nerd, yeah, make sure to like and subscribe. But I'm going to keep going. Keshi. All right. So here is uh, the first really big lot. Um, well, at least most of it. Uh, like there were so many doubles and things of other characters in the same colors and just so many variants and things that I, I, I opted just to try to keep the, the biggest variety of the best ones and the rest uh there's not a whole lot left over but like here's some of the doubles and extras and things i mean there's already doubles in here but triples and whatnots i mean although i do have one two three orange rose by but you know i am uh, biased so uh yeah look at all this rainbow goodness so these are all pretty much from the same line uh within maybe a couple different years but they're all they all have one uh, key feature that is the same, and that is that they are pencil toppers. So they've all got big old buttholes to put pencils in. And these were produced in the early 90s. And uh, there are some differences in these, and I want to point out a few different figures here. Um, let me focus back in. I do want to point out a diff some differences here. Uh, real quick, while we, I want to go to the back here. Um, this Mothra, I think this is one of my favorite sculpts from this little line here. And uh, I put him in the back just because uh, I needed some blue in the back. But uh, he's the only, he's one of the only ones that seems like it's kind of old and worn. And it's got a softer texture than the rest. Like he's got kind of a fuzzy texture. But yeah, I like this Mothra a lot. And also, since we're talking about the back, uh, the only figure in here that had a, f a complete rainbow range of colors, minus red, was uh, Mogura. So I've got... Ah! A near a rainbow, near rainbow assortment of Mogras here. So if you're into Mogra, let me know. Uh, I don't really collect Mogra, but um, I don't know. Having figures in all of these colors is really nice and cool. So yeah, if, let me know if you want in, want those. I'm gonna throw those back there. Now a couple standouts in here that are different than the others are this one, which you can see here, is not necessarily meant for a pencil. It's too it's too thin. Uh, but I, I lumped it in here because he's got a butthole. But this is an SD Godzilla, and another thing that separates him other than his small butthole is the fact that his tail is a separate piece. So when I find uh, this specific series of Keshi, um, they're always missing the tails, and it's really hard to find one that's not all junked up and missing the tails. So I was really happy to find this one, uh, and it looks beautiful. And then also in that same line, 
we have here a Mecha King Ghidorah. And uh, he also has removable parts. He's got the removable wings, which you can see here, and removable tail. So I was very happy to find him as well. Now, the rest of these do not have those features, but I wanted to point out some of my favorites in this lot. Uh, we'll start here with the, just the center. Uh, got this Hedera. Uh, this is an amazing Hedera Keshi. It's just super retro, even though it's uh, from the early 90s. It's got more of that uh, late 60s, early 70s feel to it, which is really cool. And um, Jet Jaguar. This is definitely one of my favorites from this slot. This Jet Jaguar is awesome. Uh, I wish there were more of these guys. I would love to get this in a rainbow assortment of colors. That'd be really rad. Um, let's see, we got this Lavender Godzilla here, which is really cool. And I want to point out something about these Godzillas here. Um, I've got a near rainbow assortment of Godzillas. Um, you'll notice that a few of these have the same sculpt, like uh, this. These have the same sculpt, same butthole, same tail. Now, if you look at first glance, these look very similar, but these are different sculpts. You can see this has wider eyes. And if you look at the back, this tail is sculpted, curled around. This tail is sculpted outward, but it's still uh, for the pencils. And then here's another one with the, the tail sculpted outwards. And uh, this is also yet another variant uh, face sculpt. So there's actually a few different ones in here. So that was kind of cool. Also, uh, this pink Gigan. I think this is also from one of the earlier ones. He's got that same texture as that uh, that blue Mothra. He just he just feels so velvety. I love the, the texture. I also love this pink. And he's unfortunately the only pink one that I got in here. I did get a lovely lavender Biolante. Uh, unfortunately, I already have one of these. Um, I actually was looking for one of these for a couple years. And then finally... Uh, a couple friends of mine from Germany had found one in a junk lot they bought while they were visiting here. I, I had given them a tour of uh, Knocking on Broadway, and they sent it to me as a gift. So now I've got an extra one. And I've also got three orange ones, which I believe I already have orange. But I might as well just collect all the different colors um, because there was also a green, which I did not have. And I really wanted the green. And I'm very tempted to paint the top red, but maybe I won't. I'll maybe just do the rainbow assortment. Uh, also, Biolante wise, I got a couple of um, Biolante as he's transformed. And I, I have this in red. I might even have yellow, so I might might even just uh, do a little rainbow assortment of these as well. But pretty much anything else in here is going to be for sale. I got a bunch of these Mecha Kongs. Like, I got so many Mecha Kongs. Like, those are in those piles over there because I just had too many of them. And then I've got th three of these. Uh, Three of these uh, orange Biolantes, those will be for sale, a couple of those for sale. A couple different versions of King Ghidorah, regular retro King Ghidorah, and then make a King Ghidorah. And then, um, I think this is the last one we'll talk about. I'm not going to talk about every single piece in here. A little Dorat, a cute little adorable Dorat, which I am torn on keeping. I don't know. Damn Dorats. But yeah, that's that little lot. If I had the, if I had the extra ones that I didn't include... These are all the pencil sharpener-ish ones that I got from the lot. Uh, sort of. These are all the standard versions. Get ready. Ooh la la. As you can see, this is the same series of uh, pencil toppers, but they're all translucent. Yeah, buddy. These are crystal clear and clean. These are the cleanest examples of these I've ever seen in my life. And... Um, Let's take a look at some of them up close here, shall we? Up first, we got a pink Godzilla. And man, these are really hard to see, I guess, um, you know, back here. But up in focus, these just look glorious. And uh, I've also got a, uh, a kind of neon one, a neon uh, yellowish green. These are just so beautiful. Um, over here, we've got Biolante. Definitely a keeper for me, since I'm a Biolante man. Got a Mothra Larva. We've got a Megalon. Unfortunately, there's no Jet Jaguar in this one. I I'm rather sad. And uh, I believe this is Garuda. Is that what this is? Or was this, is this Super X2 or Garuda? 
I always get them confused. Or is it neither? I know what Super X1 looks like. Wait, Garuda has like the little has longer guns on it, doesn't it? Anyway, let me know. It's one of those Heisei era uh, ships, and um, I'm not I'm not a super geek uh, about anything made after Bailante. So, is it Super X2? Man, maybe I'm maybe this is Super X2. Uh, got Gigan, Angirus. We got full blown Martha, Marthra, <laughs> Marthra, and Radon, or Rodan as he's known here. Uh, I've got King Ghidorah, Mecha King Ghidorah, Mecha King Ghidorah. Man, I've actually got lots of him, different colors. So we'll definitely have some of those up for sale. Most of these will be for sale. Double Baragon, lots of doubles. I thought these were doubles. These are not doubles. Gorosaurus and Walrus Man. Double King Shisa. I like King Shisa. And then a lone Gigan back here in the back. All right. Guess what? I'm not done with this Crystal Clear. Blah, 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 blah. The Crystal Clear Keshi continues with these guys. Uh... So that first uh, lot that I showed that had the uh, the Keshi with the separate pieces, like the tails and stuff that come apart, that's this, except clear. So these are even more rare. Um, man, imagine losing a piece like this. Hold on, let me zoom. Imagine losing a little piece like this, this big, this little tiny clear piece. How easily that would get lost if I can fucking zoom. i zoom, focus. I probably should do this. Can I do that? Can you let me see it? See, it's so small and clear, it won't even focus. The camera doesn't believe it's there. So yeah, these are even... I think these are probably the hardest ones to find complete um, out of all the Godzilla Keshi series. Uh, and there are some standout pieces in here. So first of all, we've got we've got my, my, my lover, my lovely plant girl. Uh, by Alante. Man, these are these are actually exceptionally hard to keep in focus. Come on, you fucking bastard. Focus. Is it focusing? It's focusing on my background still. There we go. See, that looks lovely. Alright. Um, let's see who else we got here. And we got these two Godzillas. Different sculpts. Slightly different tones. Ah! And again, these are pencil toppers but oh wow that one's uh that one's not gonna fit on a pencil look at that it's not cut all the way through interesting and this one isn't either so maybe these were initially supposed to be pencil toppers but then they decided uh we can't do that anymore because we got to plug in the tails i don't know interesting to say the least now this one's really cool actually i'll, I'll save that one i'll save i'll save the last few for the the last cool best for last uh, got a couple space Godzillas, uh, complete, different colors. And again, I do not collect most of these characters, so these will all be for sale. Mainly, I just collect Godzilla and Bailante. Now, here we go. Uh, this is a this is a rare one. Um, mainly, good freaking Christ, um, is it's Mecha Godzilla, and he's got the guns on top here. Uh, his tail doesn't come off, but the the thing the thing that separates him from the others is that he has articulated arms, and they're so tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny pieces. So I always find these, but they're always missing the arms, always. And he's got both of them. So yeah, that's a uh, that's a hard one to get. I'm debating on keeping him. Uh, over here we've got a Godzilla Junior. Complete. These are all complete. Gigan, complete. I've got a batcher back here. I didn't figure. I couldn't figure out where to stick them. I've also I already got a friend uh, who has claimed pretty much all batcher items I have, because uh, I don't collect batcher, and he wanted them all. So batcher, all of his wings come off. Again, these would be really easy to lose. Now, here's the meat and potatoes. Let me uh, let's see if I can get focused on these guys by themselves. Move him back a bit. Oh no, his butt fell off. Oh, my, my 
belly's making noises. All right, so here's these guys. These are these are the best ones in here. These are so chunky. Uh, let me look at these uh, Gitaras in the back first. Um, so here we have two different versions of King Ghidorah. Uh, this is just standard King Ghidorah um, in two different colors. And his wings and his tail are two separate pieces, uh, three separate pieces, including the tail. And those are really nice. Now, I've also got a King Ghidorah, uh, sorry, <laughs> Mecha King Ghidorah. They're all kings, aren't they? Is there a Queen Ghidorah? Uh, and he's got the mechanical wings. I think these might be up backwards. Anyway, they can, you can take them out and switch them around. And I even got one that was still on the sprue, uh, although it's missing the tail. So the, the tail piece from the sprue, I guess, already fell off. Um, but yeah, those are really rad. Now, these two are super sick. These are the biggest, chunkiest Keshi, uh, biggest, chunkiest Keshi in here. So we've got this really awesome Batra. And even though I don't collect Batra, I'm very tempted to hang on to this one because it's just so rad. It's just so cool. Look at that. Man. Uh, yeah. And Anguirus. Man, I wish I had, I had like a Godzilla from this line. These are bigger. Uh, again, I'm not very familiar with uh, all the different names of all these different Keshi lines. I will have to familiarize myself. If you do know the names of these particular lines individually, I had the paperwork for these two. I'm not sure if the, the paperwork that I had came with these two, but uh, I'll have to check. But anyway, this is a nice little a nice little haul of um, uh, clear ones. And I actually had even more doubles over here and stuff that I just didn't throw in there. So yeah, uh, majority of these will be for sale. And I've got one more lot coming up, and it's a doozy because it's glow in the dark. Okay, I swear to God, this is the very last lot from that bag. Um, and hey, it's it's glow in the dark. Um, I've gotten some of these in in the last, I think, last months, one of my hauls. Uh, and uh, yeah, I love these. And I have a bunch of these guys. I do have uh, some of the King Ghidorahs and the Bailantes and the Godzillas. But uh, here's a nice little variety of them. Uh, these were sold um, in 1993 alongside the promotion of Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, or Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, which it was called in the US. And they came in individually in these little blue bags. And um, yeah, they're all glow in the dark. Uh, the. I believe these were initially released uh, as just regular solid colors, and I think one of the papers that I got had one of those on there. But um, anytime I've ever gotten these in these little blue bags, they don't have paperwork, so maybe they were initially released as Gashapon and then later as like theater exclusives or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. Well, anyway, uh, I had some doubles in here that I took out, and I also had this little uh, flying uh, Batra that uh, I just couldn't work into the symmetry here, so took them out. This is Garuda for sure, because it's I know it's from the God Mechagodzilla 2 movie. So we got a Garuda, and again, these are all just neon glow-in-the-dark. Uh, I'm not going to demonstrate the glow-in-the-dark, because I've got all the windows open, it's broad daylight. Um, here we have uh, a Mothra and a Batra. And it's really cool that like you've got this dark, kind of crimson color glow-in-the-dark. Um, and, and they work, they, they, they do glow-in-the-dark. Um, I am trying to collect every different color variation because these are the main colors here. You've got this uh, kind of dark purple crimson color. Uh, you've got the, the orange, the green, the yellow. And uh, I'm trying to collect every single version of each character that I collect in these colors. So pretty much anything that is not uh, being kept from my collection will be for sale. So pretty much one or two of every character will be for sale. Uh, up here we've got Godzilla. I know I've already got pretty much every color of this Godzilla, so he will be included for those of you that are just looking for Godzilla stuff specifically. And uh, there's Godzilla in kind of a lava orange. These are really hard to focus. I gotta keep them about that far from the camera. Minya again. Um, a really cool Batra again. Uh, again, I don't collect Batra but in his larval form. Got Heisei Mechagodzilla and Godzilla Jr. Not Manila. I don't have as much of a problem with this Godzilla Jr. We've got a Mech Godzilla with his uh, which was got after Garuda connects to his back. Got a Space Godzilla. Uh, I don't have this one. This is Godzilla Jr. Um, I actually like the sculpt of this. Let me see if I can get a 
better look at these. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep one of these, but one of these will go for sale. I like this. I also like the color they use on this one. Like, for this sculpt in particular. It's rare that I like anything related to Young Godzilla. I've also got a couple doubles of classic Showa Mechagodzilla. Those will be for sale. And then back here, I have triple the Ghidra. Um, I have one orange standard Ghidra. Uh, I know I've got this in yellow. I don't know if I have it in orange. I'm not sure if I'll keep that or not. And I have two Mecha King Ghidras uh, in yellow. And I know I have one of those. So one of these will be for sale as well. And then the back. I know you guys have all been trying to see this. I've got a Destroyer. And I have this in the bright orange. I don't have it in this dark color, but he looks really badass in this color. Um, yeah, I, this will be for sale for pretty sure. If this one's not, it'll be I'll swap it out with my bright orange one. But, man, these are pretty rad. Well, anyway, this is a nice little lot. And, um, yeah, man, I mean, just look at... Let me see if I can pan back out here. I'm going to stack all this shit back up. So you've got this lot, right? So you got this lot of these glow-in-the-dark dudes we've got all the, the little mini vinyls we've got this awesome lot of uh, the clear dudes and then you've got all of these solid and clear finger puppets I mean all of this stuff that was all in that bag of, of stuff and I'm not gonna say how much I paid but it was it was it was a very low amount very surprised that no one bid on this auction but now you can own certain pieces of this if you want them i will be posting these up for sale on my instagram page at tokyo toy bastard also i'm thinking of starting like a keshi group uh for just like you know japanese uh kaiju keshi and stuff like that um i do sell dragon ball keshi too but that will be through my vintage uh dragon ball group that i run all on facebook but uh yeah usually this kind of stuff you're, you're welcome to claim it in the comments hit me up send me a dm on on my um, Instagram at Tokyo Toy Bastard, or uh, follow me here on YouTube. You can comment on YouTube and let me know, and then I'll give you my email address. But you can find all my email, all my stuff, uh, pretty much linked below. Yeah, that's it. I'm sorry. This this was a very long uh, Keshi review uh, unpacking. That was a lot of Keshi to look at. Maybe I should have made that a separate video. I don't know. Would you Would you watch just a, a separate video about Keshi? Like you know, I tend to have lots of Keshi in my videos. Would you? Would you prefer that I keep like large loads of Keshi a separate video or should I just include them? Because this was all basically part of my auction haul from this week. So I included it. Didn't think it would take this long. But anyway, leave me a like if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought was the best pickup today. I know, you know, got to think all the way back to the beginning, the non-Keshi stuff, you know. What was the best Keshi item that I picked up? What was the best non-Keshi item I picked up? What would you like me to see? What would you like to see me find in the future? Which of these items do you think you would be interested in buying if you uh, were able to? Speaking of that, right now shipping is a bitch uh, from Japan to the U.S. U.S. is still not accepting, or well, I should say, uh, there are no flights. So Japan Post is not accepting uh, airmail to the U.S. So I can only ship by boat or by FedEx. By boat takes a while, could be a couple months. It's pretty cheap though, but no tracking. And... Uh, FedEx is, you're looking at a $100 minimum to ship anything. So if you are going to buy anything uh, and you live in the United States or even Australia, um, yeah, let me know because um, it's better to buy in bulk and probably just have it shipped by FedEx. But anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. Um, yeah, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry about the length. Hope you're having a lazy weekend if you're watching this on the weekend that I upload it. That's what I'm doing. Staying home, staying safe recovering uh i think i'm gonna i think i'm gonna watch some jackie chan today i got this jackie chan police story police story 2 criterion collection jackie chan time